intro for those who don't know you. Uh, two minutes, because I know if I don't put this... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I know you're an accountant. Yes, uh, really. You did your articles mm. uh, from the same company, because I also did my articles okay. at PwC. Right. But, so there's two accountants sitting here. Yeah. Somebody was saying accountants don't have personality or something. <laughs> Guys, how? <laughs> Let's show them. Let's show them. Tepo. <laughs> Tepo, who's Tepo? What does Tepo do? Tepo. Why is doing what? Yo, what he's Tepo doing. Tepo, my paper, eh? Yo, it's a, I think it's a, lot of, it's a, list, a long list of things, but I'm just going to summarize it yes, in terms of the things that are actually relevant for our show. Yes. Uh, Tepo, my paper is a chartered business accountant in practice and a general tax practitioner, mm. amongst many other things, motivational speaker, uh, business mentor. Mm -hmm. Hey, I stand for, and I think one, one of the titles that I like the most, I call myself a poverty activist. Ah. Yeah, I think that's... Okay, I'm hearing this for the first time. Yeah. Uh, Tell me more, poverty activist? What? Yeah, you know, you know I, I, I feel like a lot of times we, we undermine poverty. Yeah. You know, I like the fact that the previous speaker actually, she said something that touched my heart, yeah. you know, because the same people that she talks about are the same people that I used to hire, all of them. Mm. You know, yeah, I'll just take our truck and I'll just... Take all of them. Mm. First thing, I'll buy them food before I give them a job. So these are the guys who are at the corners, looking, the corners for the job. looking for the job. Usually uh, artisans. Yeah and, the, yeah, and their stories are very touchy. Yeah. You know, you know, man, when a, a man who's like 50 tells you that I cannot afford rent and I have kids, I mean, that, that's very touchy mm. because I'm looking at myself, I'm 39 mm. and I have kids, you know, mm. and now mm. I do all these things so that my kids can eat. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. when I find another man who cannot be able to provide, yeah. hey, that's very painful, man. Sure. Yeah. I suspect that's why you do what you do then. Yo, yeah, I think I think I would say my what I do I think for me is a calling. Yeah. Because I call entrepreneurship being a calling more than just waking up in the morning and trying to get money. Yeah. Because when you actually wake up in the morning to get money, that's when you find yourself in continuous blindness. Yeah. That you cannot even control. Yeah. But then when something is a calling, there comes a point where you'd have a turnaround point. Yeah. Yeah. Where a certain blunder will actually wake you up yeah. and actually teach you something in terms of shaping your life proper. Yeah. You know, I always say, find your purpose yeah. and you'll find your money. Yeah. Yeah. So what businesses do you run? Uh, oh. Yeah. Maybe the ones that, you know, you wake up every day, you say, I'm going to this place. Mm. I love doing this. So I'm like a director of almost seven, if not eight companies. Okay. And uh, all of them active, yeah, active, they all have other things to do, yeah. man. But my favorite one is you know, is my construction company and uh, called Puff Holdings. Puff is like a shortcut of Epaphras, Epaphras is my second, yes. Name. And then uh, my favorite one, which is what I do a lot of good work, you know, like free work for the yeah. community, is TM Accountants, okay. you know, yeah, that's where I actually do. But you know, I also have like family, I come from a family of you know, business people yeah. where we have like a chain of businesses where I think some of my blunders actually, I think the turnaround came from there, you know, okay. when I kind of like joined, you know, joined venture with my family because my family, you know, when they say, when it rains, it pours. Yes. A lot of times. Somebody I hear, said today, danger knows danger. Yeah, you know, <laughs> a lot of times I hear people when you mention if you're from Sashiro, I was born in like, like born and raised in Sashiro. Yeah. You know, a lot of times when people talk about my paper, they'll be like, which one, the, the one with the wholesalers? Yeah. And they're like, ah, well, you know. Yeah. And it always breaks my heart because I'm like, guys, if you know we don't sleep, in my family we don't sleep. Mm. It's like literally, even when I get a girlfriend, I'll tell her, like, if you're going to get married into my family, just understand we're not the type of people who will give you a black, you know, a credit card and say, hey, go and, you know, mm. black card, go and spoil yourself. Mm. You literally just have to come and work with us. Mm. You mm. become actually one of us. Yeah. Okay. You know, which, yeah. which is a very, most people don't like to work. They just like yeah. to, you know, to spend. Yeah. Yeah. But with us, yeah. it's different. Okay. So, I mean, I'm assuming there's a gold mine of blunders in there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Let's go. Take me through yeah. the ones that you think this one. Uh, yeah, I will, I will just say the journey of me becoming an accountant, and this is why maybe for me I say an entrepreneurship is a calling yeah. because I can tell you I hated being an accountant. Yeah. I can tell you that. And, you know, I remember so when I was, I was Born and raised in Sashiro. Remember, Sashiro at the time, I think during the 80s, it was a very dangerous place. And I think the guy that was my role model, his name was called Bramandla. Yeah. And what Bramandla was doing, he was just a guy that was selling weed 
driving his, you know, red <laughs> Ford. I can't remember Ford. I can't remember. Cortino. Or Cortino or something. Yeah. Ah, no, Escort. 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 Oh, yes. Very small one. Yeah, I didn't have a back. You yes. know, back hashback. Yeah, I had a hashback and he didn't have the back window. I don't know what you oh, call it. Back yes. window, whatever. Okay. Yeah, and Brahmana was a very clean guy. Like, he was a very, very clean guy. And he'd had a couple of goons, yeah. you know, with him. All he does, he just sells weed. You know, he doesn't like all these messy things and chasing people with knives. Nah, he was yeah. not about that. Yeah. So when I grew up, I used to admire. I was like, hey, this guy is a very smart businessman. And this usually guy, smart, smart, yeah. smartly dressed guy. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, hey, I want to run a business like this guy. Yeah. You know, and then I started being a problem. You know, I remember in Zone Two there used to be this other shop called Kali Zira. Yeah. So they had this, uh, you know, those gaming machines. You know. Yes. Yeah. So I used to steal my mom's money and I would go play those games. Then uh, I think, you know, when you, I think I was just born an accountant. Yeah. Then I remember there was a day where there was no electricity in Sichero, and then she sent me to Defeme, you know, to buy paraffin. Got there, and then I calculated, she said, buy five liters, and then I bought three liters, and then I took another one. Problem. Big one. Eh, very big one. Mm. Then my parents actually took me to Malaysia. Mm. Yeah, and that's when the to Malaysia, you know, things are very slow. Like life moves in. Like, what's <laughs> happening here? Like, ah, if I, there's no Brahman, like, there's nothing. It's like, you greet the whole community now. I'm like, ah, ah this is not it. Uh, I created a small gang. Uh, and I was in primary by then. I think I was doing standard one. Created my small gang, yeah, and I think we were like seven. I was the big boy. Uh, Gave them like, you know, yeah, table uh, knives. Not was she was. Yeah, mm. table knives. And then I think I had three star or cup, but I never used oh it. Oh, my word. Never used it. Yeah, we never did anything with yeah. it. It was just for self-protection, yeah. right? Then I was, I don't know, I wouldn't call myself smart. I would just say, you know, sometimes God invests in his soldiers. I think that's what I always say. Then I saw myself uh, ending up in a commercial school. How I got there, I don't know. Mm. So the guy who was my math teacher actually spoke to my parents. I didn't know. He's like, ah, no, this guy is very sharp. And then he applied for me there. He just called me and said, hey, we're going for an you know, aptitude test. Mm. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, let's go. This guy spent his own money. Didn't ask my parents for anything. Use his own car. Wow. Get to the home commercial college at that time. I think now it's Waterbeck FET. So commercial was like... Yeah, it was like, yeah. you know, I get the aptitude and, you know, uh, I'm okay. Uh, do you get it. Mm. You know, at that time I missed the school, you know. Mm. You can tell, you know. Mm. Mm. Then, okay, cool. Get to high school. When I get to high school now, I get to meet different kinds of people. You know, people who come from extremely rich families. People who come from poor families. Mm. Like now, I'm confused. Because I don't even understand how to define myself. Yeah. You know, then I had a couple of friends who would uh, would go to church. Now we started going to church. Hey, right. and, and then, yeah, and oh, then yeah. We'd, we'd sit in one room every... So that school was very strict. Yeah. So like at 6, a, 6 p.m., we go to study up until 9. And then 9, we go to recess and then they're locked. We sit there. We just start to talk about our families. Then I started to realize that people come from very, very broken families. Yeah. And yet these guys are not giving up. Mm. You know, mm. and I'm like, who am I? Like, yeah. my family is not even that bad, but like, yeah. who am I? My family, you, you yeah. went through its own journeys yeah. of life, right? Ah, uh, then, uh, okay, but here's me. I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. So in primary, when I was a goon there in primary, mm. I was selling, I was selling stuff. I was a bellboy, I was, you know, mm. Mr. School, and I used to carry that 10 kg of biscuits, you know, those small biscuits, yeah. ah, and then I would fry, you know, peanuts, and I had a very good lucrative business. I was making a lot of money. Teachers were my clients. You know? yeah. yeah, I was tops. Get to high school there. Now business is not there. I'm like, hey, this school is very strict. It's like a boarding school. There's security guards. Ah, what am I going to do here? Looked around. and look, Seniors are smoking. Mm. I know it was illegal. I'm like, ah, what am I going to oh, do here? Yeah, the only business... Are you going where I'm thinking you're going? I'm mm. telling you, Baba. I went out and one day I remember. So we were allowed to go out on Friday. And on Friday, I remember, went out to a complex. I was trying there, trying to find something I can sell. I'm like, ah, sweet one, sell. We have a, you know, a canteen there. I was like, ah, I'm going illegal now. <laughs> Bought a canteen of cigarettes. Right? I'm like, how am I going to enter with this thing at the gate? And then I bought a box of conflicts. I was like, then I opened it, opened the cartoon, put all those things in there, closed it with the super glue. Get Guys, uh, let it be known that my biggest blunders does not condone you know, yeah. That's a disclaimer. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, and when I get to the, so I'm a people's person. Yeah. Like I, I talk a lot. So you, uh, get, you, you get the... Yeah, I get at the gate. The yeah, I think to the box of conflicts, seal it proper with, you know, look, and I even just mix it with things there. Get at the gate and then I greet the security before they greet me. 
I say, hey, Malume, how are you? I even bought him a 20. Uh. Yeah, on the side. I give him a say, Malume, I know you smoke. There you go. Uh, this guy doesn't even do a thorough check. He let me pass. Then I go inside. And my business started, and it was doing well. <laughs> 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 then comes where I have to, I'm doing my matric. Now I felt like I don't want to... I didn't apply for university. Yeah. I never even applied for a single university. I said, I want to get here. Told my mom I want to get here. Yeah. Then my mom left me for the whole December. She let me just be myself. Then comes January. I think TEF opened. I, think, I can't remember if it was on the 3rd of February. Somewhere there. Early February. Yeah, my mom comes into my room now. In the morning, she already took a bath. Comes into my room. She says, Eman, we have to go. Where are we going? She says, this thing of you taking gap, it's not going to work. You know, I'm yeah. like, uh, what are you? Uh, I think I not work with black women. Yeah, she tells me it's not going to work. I'm like, but what are you saying? She's like, dress up. I didn't take a bath. She's like, dress up. My mom is like that. Dress up. My brother, I'm telling you, just took some jeans, a shirt, and some flops. Got into a taxi with my mom. Mm. She gets to Tef. She's like, I don't even want you to do anything. My mom applied for me, and I was taken into a school of accounting. That's what I'm telling you. I never hated oh, this accounting there. Now, my mom says to me, yeah, you must find a room today, you know. And uh, remember, she left around 5 o'clock. I already got accepted. And she's like, you're going to find a room. I'm going to leave you here. She gives me money for food and money for transport to come back home. But the room, I think, around 9 p.m. I don't have a toilet bag. I don't have luggage bag. Like, I have literally nothing. Mm. I slept in that room with my roommate. The whole night, we just we were the same. Mm. We were just talking. Hey, how did we end up here? Just having chats, man, you know. Yeah, and then following morning, I think around 6, just woke up. I realized taxis are now doing the movements. And I just went, rinsed my mouth, and I got into a taxi. Two days without bathing. Two days without bathing? Yeah, my brother. So, then I graduated. You know, graduated. First year was not really serious. With I remember I think I got 14% with commercial law. Hated it. I'll get into class. I'll stay at the back. I remember the lecturer told me, I think his name was Bongani. He told me, he's like, hey, you're at the back. Book sit for next year. And I laughed at him. <laughs> and the next year, next year I was there. Mm. And that's when I started <laughs> that, That's actually when I started taking things serious. I was like, hey, you know what? This, I, let me just pass and get these people off my back. So he tells you to book... <laughs> Yeah, he tells you to book a, a seat for next yeah, year. Yeah, because already he can tell that this guy, yeah, yeah. yeah, because he got my name. He's like, oh, this one is not even serious. I remember when, we, when I was writing exams, I remember we had, you know, tough, you know, and entertainment. Yeah. I remember there was a badge there, and the following day I was writing. My brother, I left, I think, the badge around 2 o'clock. Get to my room, open the book, I just said, ah, I know these things. I got 14%. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> you know, so graduated. Now, I still hate it being an accountant. Now I'm like, ah, I need just any job because I'm an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So at TEF, I had a couple of businesses. One of the businesses that I had, I had a computer. Be before you go there, mm -hmm. I mean, you, were, you smuggled some stuff into the body school. How I, did that business go? I never got caught. Uh. I'm a people's person. I'm very respectful and humble. Uh. So the, you pushed the stuff inside. I pushed the stuff up until the last day of me at school. The, you know, the rest manager, he came in and he found me smoking wine. Yeah, in the rest. Oh, he can't do anything. It's my last demon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and you know what he said to me? He's like, so he, they, they used to call me with my second name. Epaphras. He's like, are you also a big five? For a big five, it was this travel some guys. <laughs> that way he's so he's like, are you also part of big five? I'm like, no, man. I'm so not so the big five is from yeah. the, the animals. Yeah, and I offered room. him smoke. He was smoking. I just offered him smoke. I said, just take one. Hey, he took one. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. You know. Okay, <laughs> fast forward to... <laughs> First you word, you finish now, university. University there, and, and now I'm like proper, proper. My marks are like get distinctions. Like I think my third year, yeah. accounting was getting like distinctions. Yeah. You know, the whole year. I'm like that was difficult, but I did it. Yeah. Now I hated being an accountant. I'm looking for a job now. I'm thinking, and now my girlfriend was pregnant. Now I'm going to have a baby. Yeah. You know, thinking. I'm like in my family, my family doesn't take care of your baby. You take care of your own child. Yeah. You know. Now I'm thinking, snap. What am I going to do here? I'm like, I need a quick job. Then I applied for some jobs. Where I see accountant, I don't apply. Then I would apply. I remember I saw a post of a sales. Not even accountants want to be I accountant. don't want. These things, I don't want them. Then I saw one job. I think uh, Afbop was studying the division of you know, insurance. Mm. They's like, they're looking for sales consultants. I'm like, ah, here. Me, I've been doing this sales thing. I can fit in here. Yeah. I applied. I went to the interview. I got the job. Mm. I think three days to a week later, my manager calls me to the office. Oh, no, before that, I sell, tried to sell a policy to my neighbor. Mm. Ah, that neighbor, you know, a teacher, you're thinking, ah, guaranteed seat. Mm. 
And she says to me, Sam, I know I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> I, a guy with a degree in accounting, how do you sell policies? Uh. Hey, I left that house you know, with a tail between my, my legs. Uh. Ah, and head. Hey, then I think a few days later, my boss calls me to my office. She says, Sam, hmm? I want to tell you something. Close the door. Close the door, she says to me, did you know you actually, you know, scored higher than everybody else. Nobody came close to you during the interview, wow. you know, but you were the last person to be hired. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, the panel was actually uh, uh, deliberating on the issue of how does a smart guy like you do here? What, what does he want? Yeah. They, they thought you're not going to last here. Yeah. They're going to waste their money in training you. And she's like, you don't belong here. Ah, the following day I didn't come to work. Uh, I, I, funny thing is I listen to God when he talks. I just... I didn't come to work the following day, I just left, you know. Then I didn't have a job. Went back to square one. And I'm thinking, uh, now, three days later, I get a call. So this guy says, I'm from LMD Africa Chartered Accountant. Uh, is that Tepo speaking? I'm like, yeah, but what does the Chartered Accountant have anything to do with me? Mm. This guy says, no, I'm looking at your CV. I'm like, yeah, hey, my guy, I did not apply to you. Don't want to be an accountant. Mm. This guy says, yeah, no, but... I see you, you applied. I'm like, did you advertise the name of your company? He says, no. Did you say trainee accountant? He said, no. We just said, we just said, uh, we, I can't remember the term they used. Now I'm like, you see, what? that's the problem. I, 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 cancel me. He said, I hear you. Either way, come to the interview. I went to the interview. Funny thing, I was interviewed by the big boss of the company. I think the head of his was like in KZN. Yeah, he was Indian, that guy. He interviewed me. That guy was happy all through the interview. And this time I was the first one to be hired. Wow. Yeah, two days later, I caused a strike. Heaven. Yeah. Heaven. Yeah, it's just that I can't go into details in terms of what I, why, why I caused a strike. Yeah, but I caused a strike, and then eventually me and the management, we found a common ground. And then a day later, they called me to the office. They say we are transferring you to Joburg. Now I'm telling my girlfriend because now I never wanted to go to Joburg. I always wanted to be a Limpopo person. I'm like, yo, uh, now I have problems. They say I must go to Joburg. I think I'm going to leave this job. She says, ah, you know, don't, you don't have to. I think that's when my relationship ended. Hey, sh hey man. You know? Yeah, and then she convinced me, convinced me, and then uh, I relocated. And that's how two years later that company was bought by PwC. You know, I remember, you know, looking outside the window of PwC, I'm like, I still don't want to be a chartered accountant. Mm. I want to be a businessman. Mm. But now, I had to, when I got to PwC, I learned a lot. Mm. So I was one of those people, when my peers, remember when you serve articles, other people want to be chartered accountants, yes. that's all they care about, they yes. focus on books. Yes. So I was the complete opposite. So I was the star when it comes to giving solutions to my business, to my clients. Remember, now at PwC, my clients were like JSE listed companies, like construction companies, and then I was an expert in terms of, you know, government audits. Auditor General was always, yes. you know, I, I had like ICD, very, very yes. big clients. Yes. Like my clients were like, my profile of clients was like top notch, you know. Then, ah, now I'm thinking, I think I was doing my final year. I was a senior on the audit. Now you're you are handling, you know, the budget and, you know, putting everybody together. Now I see how much I make for PwC. Yeah, yeah. you get because you're doing budget. I said, nah, uh-uh. Now I don't want to work for any board. Mm. I want to create PwC of my own. Mm. Yeah. Now, I am a problematic person, as you know. Now I'm having difficulties with my bosses. Because I'm one of the few people that I say, I stand up for myself. Mm. I don't care who you are, black or white Indian, I stand up for myself. So I had scandals of my own going up and down and offices and taking institutions up and down. I was that guy. Mm. Now I realize now in this department, things are no longer looking. Now I wanted to go to internal audit. Uh, go and speak to internal audit lady. And she's like, ah, you, I've heard you do a very good job. Come to my side. Ah, uh, go to, you know, she organized an interview. Go there. HR said, ah, you are okay. Two days later, I get a rejection letter. We regret to tell you that you cannot transfer. I'm like, can you manage? Like, how does this happen? Your articles. Yeah, but I want, now I want to go to yes. internal audit. Now I'm thinking, how get, do I get rejected? Now I'm like, I'm going to the office. Remember the office of the internal audit is right in front of my office. I walk there, march there. When I get there, they say, close the door. And then I close the door, and then these other things I cannot disclose. Yeah. But what she said to me is that you're very smart. Go and open your own accounting firm. Mm. Yeah. 
got signed off and then, you know, opened my own account, accounting firm, you know, changed, you know, remember we have accounting buddies. I moved from yes. Saika and then I did another one called Cyber. Yes. And I've been with Cyber for a couple of years. But I did not start my accounting firm immediately. Mm. Then I think after that, uh, I left PwC. I took, after that incident of mm. me not getting into internal audit, then I realized I'm left with a month and then I'm done with everything that I had to cover in terms of my articles. Mm. Then I took one month of leave of the remaining month. Yeah, oh. I was just, just at my home. So you're left with a month. Yeah, of the article. yeah, but I'm so done so already. Yeah. My peers and DNA. Hey, so when are you with finishing off? Yeah, I you're finished very, the last day. You yeah, know. you know. Then I just took a whole month of leave and just then I just went to PWC, just submit a laptop and just take and my yeah. things and leave. Yeah. You know, they have that ceremony of signing off yeah. and whatever, whatever. You know. Then now I don't have a job again. Ah, but I had savings. I was very you smart. You still don't want to be a, an, accountant. an accountant. Like I still hate it. Mm. Then I got a job interview at one of the mines in Bagasort. Get to that mining, but the job was like a junior accountant. You know, now I'm just getting a job just to survive. You know, I'm thinking of the money that I saved my child. Ah, I already got gym accustomed to like serious life. I can't afford it now. Mm. You know. Then I remember during the interview, the interview was going very fine until they asked me a question to say. Why do you think you're suitable for this job? I said, eh, did you look at my CV? Like I'm overqualified for this job. And now you're telling me, how can you even ask me that question? In an actual fact, I'm overqualified for this job. Obviously, we all know that that was not going to get me yeah, a job. Yeah. But then I, re I realized <laughs> that in life, you must teach people how to respect you. And this is why people don't get the salaries they deserve. Because so let me guess, you didn't get the job. I didn't get the job <laughs> and I didn't care. I, I, the respect, uh, something yeah. about me, that I've learned, that my father told me, yeah. you must always respect yourself yeah. and teach people how to respect you. So uh, they, were, they were just asking questions. That were yeah, and, and how I, and here is me. Yeah. When I bring people for interviews, I tailor make inter interview questions based on your CV. Yeah. I cannot yeah. ask you CVs like I'm hiring someone who does not quali have qualifications like yeah. you. And that was very disrespectful from their end. Yeah. You know, yeah, I hope they learned. Yeah. You know, yeah, they lost me. So, <laughs> so, yeah, then I don't have a job. Hey, now I'm thinking, kids now. My, my bank account is like going down. By the grace of God, somewhere, somehow, my mom just gave me a call and said, hey, you know that company of ours? I was like, yeah. She's like, we want a tender. Please come and sign the contract. I'm the CEO of the company, so we're just saying it with family. Ah, when they signed the tender, and now, hey, this is the biggest blunders now, where they mm. start. Yeah, that tender was like 7 million. Mm. That was 2011, mm. you know. Uh, it was for supplying food for a certain department. I cannot mention the department in its name. Mm. You know, so something about me, I like to do things. I don't like to, if something I can do it, I will not subcontract it. Mm. I will only subcontract if I have more mm. and I don't have time. Yeah. So that time I'm not working, I have time. Calculated those meals, I can tell, oh, 10 kg serves so many amount of people, you know, of, of learners. Mm. And okay, sharp, started doing that thing by myself. Now I, didn't, I don't have trucks. I want you to understand. Yeah. I'm separating my family businesses to my businesses. Now, that, that I want you to get the distinction. My family business are wholesalers doing their own things. Yeah. I'm here, yeah. right? Then subcontract this guy to do two, I think it was three guys with vents. You know, the other one had like that one turn, you know, half trucks, and then another one to had two uh, buckies. Yeah. Subcontract them and say, you, your job is to deliver my stuff to, you know, my veggies because those veggies, they're needed freshly almost every day, yeah. right? I'm like, your job is to send them there. Now I'm like, in terms of capital, I'm very smart. When it comes to capital, sourcing money, I'm good in talking and <laughs> I can calculate numbers and I know how to approach people and how to just, you know, sell myself. Now I organized money and I still had my savings. I think I had savings that could last me almost six months of supply, you know. Now, okay, I'm busy with that job. I'm moving very fine. Um, having a townhouse, you know, in Bendo there. Nice life. Yeah. They're very nice estate, yeah. security guard. They yeah. call me before you enter. You will not enter. <laughs> I'm using my <laughs> fingerprint, you know. Yeah, things are moving smooth. Yeah. Uh, you know me, I love soft life, yeah. you know. And But I, I have love for people. Yeah. So I had, uh, so when I got that project, and then I had, I took a couple of my guys that I went to school with and university with that were not working. Yeah. So I said, my guys, we're going to work, you know. So I'm, I became their mentor, you know, which is one of my passion. Right? Yeah. Came their mentor, I started teaching them. You see, I'm not buying a car, I'm not buying a Viano. So don't be confused. Yeah. We're just going to work. And I never bought a Viano. 
I was driving a Polo, and I even finished driving a Polo with that project. All I did, I just think around along the way, I bought three trucks with the money, you know. So things were moving fine, and then Limpopo province is under administration. Oh my gosh! Yeah, no, <laughs> hey, no comment. You see, <laughs> now Limpopo is under administration. I'm like, no, no problem. I'm a smart guy. I can survive. You know, approach a couple of you know those learning institutions. You know, just to I think another one was supply called supply fee. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and then I was like, ah, okay. Looking, looked at the interest. I'm like, ah, it will cut my profit, but ah, it's not a train smash because I'll be able to, you know, finance my my thing. Mm. But now the problem is, if you keep on getting money, remember, supply fee works on a session. Yeah. If they give you money now, ma next month you're supposed to give them their money back. Yes. Now the province is not paying you. First month. Now mm. second month, I started digging into my pocket. Mm. Now I looked. I'm like, okay. This money that I have, okay, first month I supplied properly, full. Second month, yeah, I'm still going. Third month. Now I'm like, uh, I can't handle this thing now. In that process, you still have to supply the... the yeah, supply. the you contract says you must supply. You must supply. But, but the payment is not coming. The payment is not coming. But here's the thing. That's why I'm saying it's the biggest blunder because mm. it's happened now. You can talk to the government. The government tells you, hey, this administration has to come, has to do this and the processes. And I remember there was some guys that had stories there. Mail and Guardian calls me, hey, we hear that your learners are not supplied. I said, not my learners, but if you want to talk about department, no comment. I'm not going to talk about department. I'm, I'm just an entrepreneur. If you want to know stuff about my, you know, my area, go to where I'm supplying food. And I was one of those people who were giving you know, those kids proper things. Mm. My fruits and veg came from Kusiami. Mm. My rice and whatever came from Macro. Mm. Proper things. Proper. Proper, proper things, my brother. I don't like shortcuts in life. You know, then now I'm, um, okay, Macro had a good relationship with them, so I'll get very, very good discounts. But now I was paying upfront. I never had an account with them. So I'll pay upfront. You know, so I'll get my stock. And that's a smart move because interest here and here, you can't survive, you know. Then one month, then I think the fourth month, now I'm like, ah, things are, I'm starting to think. No payment still. Yeah, no payment still. I'm thinking, how do I work this thing out? And I'm like, these kids are close to my heart. Now, these kids, I can see them when they eat because sometimes I eat their food, they get there, and when they're eating, and I would see the joy that it brings into their, you know, their eyes. Mm. I was like, ah, I'm going to sacrifice fruits. Yeah, fruits are not important, but these kids must have a meal, you know. Mm. Uh, and then I'm like, as long as these kids can eat, mm. that's what is important to me. For the remaining two months, that's what I did, right? Ah, uh, let me tell you, actually, not even three months, I think it was three months. So out of six, I think three months was okay, three months was not okay. And I can tell you... Three months, no fruits. No fruits. Yes. And that's my biggest blunder now. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm trying to apply emotions into business mm. because of my love for those kids. Mm. But according to my contract, the government was supposed to pay me within 30 days. Mm. I had a right not to supply. At yes. all, absolutely. then I then I don't I don't lose anything. Yes, but but yes. Sapoma Pepper is not like that. He's that guy that moves mountains, man. Yeah. You know, and that's how I suffered. Lost a lot of money, a lot of money. I think almost close to a million there. That time, remember, my relationship with my suppliers is not even good anymore. Because yeah. you, you know, pay. yeah, and I bought trucks. I bought three trucks at that time. You know, now you can't pay for the trucks because now it's between trucks and you know supplying. Now, what is more important to me? What is close to my heart? I was like, our cars can come and go. I remember they had to repossess the trucks. I remember the guy called me. He's like, hey, where are you? I'm like, no, I'm in my house. He's like, where? I'm like, in Bendo. And he's like, I'm coming on this day. I'm like, come. When that guy came, and then he came and found me in my house. And then so I you know what he was looking for? Yeah. We already spoke on the phone. Okay. Then I gave him the keys. He's like, he looked at me. He didn't take the keys. He looked at me. He's like, my brother, you know you're the first person ever who have ever tried to collect a car from or repossess a car from mm. and you never ran away? Mm. He says, why? I said, there's two types of businessmen. The one who knows how to run a business because I, I had that experience and the one who's taking chances. Mm. I mean, how can you run with the, mm. uh, you know, the, something that does not belong to you? You cannot pay for it. Mm. Why run away? Mm. You know? mm. Then I gave it away. And then I just asked him a question. I said, if they pay me, how do I get it back? Then he told me how to get it back and 
uh, by the grace of God, I got paid the little that you know they could pay. Another one, they just told me, you know, this does not meet the meal standards. Mm. You know, as per the contract, we are not paying you. Mm. You know, and that's how I suffered. You know, yeah. And that was my biggest blunder because from there, you know, at that moment, I remember now things are not looking good. Like things are not looking good financially. Now I'm trying to balance things. Things are not balancing. Limpopo is going through term oils, left, right, and center. Now I'm trying to find, yo, it was very stressful, right? And I remember at that time, my rent was three months uh, due. So the thing about me is that I'm not scared. I'm not scared to approach people and tell them, hey, look at me. This is me. I don't have, you know. So I walked into that agency. I remember I told them, I said, hey, look, white people, ah, you know, look, I don't have money. But you know when I have money, I pay you in advance. <laughs> Here is my unpaid invoices, you see. Mm. Ah, that lady looked at me and she's like, no, you're one of our good clients, Sepo. I know. I wish God can bless you and then things go well for you. And then I left. And for three months, my rent was just wavered. Yeah, good. I paid later. You see, that's the good. The, the, I always say when you're an inter entrepreneur, it's not about just services, money. Relationships are very important. Mm. You know, and that's how I survived, you know. Then, this is not the end of it. Now, as I'm going through term wells, my family businesses are going down. Mm. Ah, we need to raise a bit pause now. Mm. <laughs> mm. Now, hey, my brother, now I have a wife, right? Now I have a wife. My wife is a student. At that time now, my wife is telling me, hey, man, you need to go to corporate. Hey, things are not looking. I said, I'm not going back. Hey, I'm not going. I did not become an entrepreneur by a chance. I'm here by a colleague. Mm. You can imagine. We will fight a lot with your wife. We will go up and down. Then, sat down with my family and then we strategized and I was like, okay, fine. My family has, you know, uh, capital, enough capital to sustain the, some of their businesses, you know. And on my side, Things were looking bad, but I, I could survive. I had good, uh, good relationships with most of my, my clients, you know. Then I was like, okay, I'm going to go to my family businesses and join forces with them. Why? Because remember, if my family has capital, it's easier for me to have my company as a side hustle. When I need capital, I can always just say, hey, borrow me money. They'll charge me interest and then I'll return it. You know, that's how... I actually worked it out. But now I've got a very serious salary cut. Mm. Uh, you can imagine my brother was, I was one of those guys who I'm very giving. Mm. So those guys of mine, so after I pay them, right, we had a tradition. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we go to coffee. Mm. I don't spend less than 20000 Oh, Yeah, because that was my salary. So mm. I, I'm giving. And remember, I still had, I would do books for people, but I didn't have a company. Mm. I would just do books for people I will just because I'm an accountant, I'm qualified to do that. Mm. You know, just do tax returns for people and stuff like that. You know. Then so all those such hustles money, I'll just spend it recklessly with my guys. Mm. You know. Now I'm in my family business, now I get their salary cut five thou. Mm. What do I do with five thou? Even my rent is like five point five, man. Like what are you telling me? <laughs> Can't even afford the rent. You see what I mean? Mm. Like you side hustles as always. Yeah. You know, my side hustles and now my family businesses took for the past nine years, actually this year. So I was running concurrently my family businesses and my business as, si as a side hustle. Yeah. For the past nine years, up until the beginning of this year, that's when I decided to just fully come back yeah. into my businesses. Yeah. But then, uh, I think the one thing about me, I'm a fighter. Yeah. I think last year, my accounting firm, I think when I looked as a side hustle, as I'm looking, now I realized I actually paid my employees almost, almost 1.5 million. Yeah, my salary, that was my salary bill for last year. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm like, this is no longer a side hustle. This is a serious business. Yeah. You know, and that's when I decided to say, and the funny thing, 40% of my clients are actually on the ones that I pay. 60% I do pro bono. And somebody said to me, but balance me here, how? 60, 40. Mm. I said, numbers, if you calculate numbers of clients, 60%. Mm. But if you calculate the monetary value, of the 40%, it's higher than I can actually afford mm. to cover that 60%, mm. you know, mm. because the 60% most of the time is like startup companies, mm. NGOs that cannot afford yeah. to do things, uh, because that, those are the things that are closer to my heart. Mm. And I think that blunder uh, actually opened my eyes mm. to say, you know what, uh, read and you can do good, you know, but do good while complying. Mm. You know, I think this is where I'm at. But that was not the end of my blunders, mm. you know. So as I'm having a side hustle, I think lockdown started. So my family businesses 
we, we uh, my brother, we, I pushed. Mm. I was that guy, I know that I was that guy. I remember driving this other bike, I used to call it Dusty. Mm. So it was a beat down bike. Mm. It was TLB, I took you all, Snell, Faster, Gamomara, the city, Maratha. I was that guy, mm. you know. Uh, and, you know, I don't, I don't care. You know this name, or my paper, I don't care about that. Mm. You know, I'm just the guy. You know, I, so we're doing construction. I think this is uh, why I have my other construction company. So I was literally focused on construction. Uh, we had a restaurant. I was the manager of it. We have wholesalers. Like, we have a couple of businesses that we're doing. Mm. But I can tell you, in that past nine years, from my family business going down, we turned it around. I think almost three or two hundred percent up. Sure. Yeah. You know, and... My side hustles at the same time, they're picking up. Mm. You know, the, I'm pushing here, I'm pushing here. Unfortunately, I don't have a wife. And my wife, you know, me and her, we divorced. You know, but, you know, when you work hard and you don't give your wife that time, mm. you lose her. Mm. You know, I think this is something that... So you can't blame her? No, I don't blame her. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's normal, yeah. you know. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Yes. You know, then lockdown started. Lockdown, when it started, my side hustles had enough money. Mm. You know, I had enough money in the reserves there. Now, I'm starting to learn... So with my side hustle, so there's this other uh, uh, event called Finance in Dava. Yes. So I would, I, could, I can afford to take myself to Sante, you know, for that three days event and, you know, you know mingle with people. Yeah. And that's how I learned about tech, yeah. tech in accounting. You know, and then I realized that I don't actually need to have a big office, yeah. you know, because an office space takes money. Yeah. So the, in my family, we buy land, we build. Yeah. So now I learned from there to say renting, because I saw one guy who was renting for, uh, from us, that guy was paying 40, 40 grand a month. This guy opens a club on Thursday and Friday. How much does he make? He sells, he sells brandy and coke. He'll run out of business. And I gave him advice. As I said, do events. Because I did events. Hey, I did a lot of things, my brother. Hey, I tried a lot of things. In my family, people say we're a jack of all trades, but we tried almost everything that sells. You know. Then, okay, lockdown comes. Now things are moving smooth, slowly and people are not making business. Now I have enough time. Yeah. Construction industry is closed. I'm like, okay, what do I do with my time? Then as I'm on Twitter, so those who know me from Twitter, I, I've called myself a shop guru. Yeah. And someone said, what is that? And I said, a man who mastered the art of transforming a spaza shop into a wholesaler. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Then I meet one person there. She's a marketing executive. So this person, but she's unemployed. It's locked down. As we were talking, 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 I'm like, you know what, I can actually, you know, uh, expand my, you know, side hustle. Mm. I'm like, let's, I was like, hey, look, I can actually give you a job, but instead of you becoming my employee, I'll make you a partner in my firm, you know, and then we'll have a division of marketing. So the clients that I have, we we'll do marketing for them, and we we'll even do other stuff for them, other services for them, mm. because it's not prohibited, mm. you know. And I'm like, we can go 50 50. I'm not greedy with money, mm. especially when it comes to partnering. I'm like, no, I'm not greedy with money. We can go 50 50. Yay. My brother, I saw myself during lockdown. I had permits because, mm. you know, I'm doing, yes. you know, new services. Yeah. My brother, I saw myself traveling to Joburg for a meeting. Now, remember, you have to book, you know, and at that time, hotels were like very strict. Yes. And, you know, yes. I saw myself spending almost 60 to almost. 200 grand from my pocket for meetings. Now, we are busy working on this lucrative deal that is supposed to give us 4.2 million. And I'm thinking, ah, 200,000 is nothing mm. compared to 4, 4 million. You know, my brother, I got a shock of my life. One day, I'm sitting, I was driving, I think I was driving to Bochum, receive a call from one of the guys that was involved in that deal. Yeah. And then he says, did your business partner tell you that she got a job? I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, she got a job. She asked me to look for a job for her at this other, it was a soccer club. So we're supposed to do marketing for that soccer mm. club and advertising mm. and, you know, the brand of my company is going to be on their sleeve. Mm. That's, that's where the 4.2 million come because I was compiling a proposal for them for, for a sponsorship. Mm. I'm thinking, eh, 4.2 million is good. I'm like, are you sure? Last time I spoke to, I spoke <laughs> to this person in the morning, this person told me she was going to a meeting to meet the CEO of that soccer club. This soccer club just got promoted into a PSN. I'm like, yeah, you're not telling me anything. Man. Ah, you're not talking about the same guy, the same lady. He's like, Emun, I'm telling you, if you do not, you do not believe me, ask anyone you know from that club. Mm. So one of the guys that were working for that club, at least I got to know. You know, call this guy, eh, hey, so and so. And she's like, no, that's our new marketing person, you know. Yeah, that sure. time I'm looking. 
eh, I lost 200,000 here. Eh, I don't have a partner. Ah, Hanty. You know, what's going on? You know, and this is, you know, this is from my side hustle. You can imagine from me suffering contracts and now here, you know. But then the guy said to me, as we were talking, he said, what do you want me to do with her? I said, no, let her keep the job, mm -hmm. you know. Because I believe that when people do bad things to you, uh, I think some way, somehow, God is just trying to show you the type of people that you shouldn't go into business yeah. with. Imagine if we had that 4.2 million, and then this person just decided to disappear. To disappear yeah. And I got to find out that this person was actually doing other businesses behind my back. Now, my guy who's doing my uh, graphic works, you know, yeah. graphic designing for my companies, and he calls me, he's like, hey, boss, I have a problem. What's wrong? Uh, he's like, no, I have un unpaid invoices from you. I'm like, from my company. He's like, yeah, but I'm like, me and you work on, you know, advanced payments. So how do I have, mm. how do I owe you? And he says, no, you remember the marketing lady? I'm like, yeah, she gave me some jobs and then she said, I must not tell you. I was like, ah, you sit on that note, go and take the money from because you didn't tell me. Mm. You have been with me for years. Mm. But why would you not tell me when somebody tells you, mm. where is your loyalty? I said, because of that, go and get your money from her. Mm. But I still gave him other jobs after that. I just said, for that money, mm. just go and get it from mm. her. Mm. You know. But that, that, those are just mm. my blunders, man. Sure. Yeah. I, uh, you see, I love time because you ask him one question. Yeah. And then the <laughs> whole 20 minutes is like, <laughs> break it down. So you look <laughs> back, Sepo, you look at all these things, <sighs> right? You mm. look at all these things. I mean, it's such an interesting thing that you're an accountant. Mm. And you're supposed to understand numbers and mm. how numbers work, mm. cash flow management, you know, mm. timing. Uh, but you still, you know, struggled with, with, with the tendons. Mm. Um, but why didn't you stop supplying? Uh, I, I I'll tell you that tender was not about cash flow as per se, mm -hmm. right? It's about the not knowing as to when someone is going to pay you. Right? Oh, yes. Remember, I already planned six months ahead. Yes. So I'm one of those people who, when I do my cash flows, I do it to the T. Yeah. I also had, you know, fi supply fin was one of my backups, yes. credit facility. Mm -hmm. I was not utilizing it before. I was just utilizing the money that I had on the reserves and my, and my partner, mm -hmm. you know. So supply fin came as, uh, as a support when the department was not paying for almost two months. Yeah. You understand? Now, this is my money that is outstanding for two months. Now I'm taking supply fin's money. Now, supply of fins money, you can only get it once. Yeah. Now, I'm existing supply of fins money once. Mm. And that's it. You can't that, that, that's it. You can't go further. Now, I have to go into those reserves that were not meant for business now. My sure. kids' money, my brother. Yeah. Have you ever been paid by government? Yeah, I got paid, but I lost. Yeah. I lost a lot of money. Yeah, because I mean... Yeah, I got paid, but I lost a lot of money close to... Reputation. Yeah, close to a million. Nah, reputation, I didn't. I still maintained it because remember when you do... When you go overboard, I went overboard. Mm. When you go overboard, government does not have a problem with you mm. going overboard. You know, the problem it was just on my side is as a business person to say, if you read a contract, the contract says these are the payment terms. We pay you 30 days. You know, even Treasury said that. I remember we attended a couple of meetings with Treasury where they said 30 days. You know, and they kept on forcing departments to pay mm. within for, uh, 30 days. So I'm saying that I should have known better mm. to say, if they say 30 days, within 30 days, if they're not paying, I'm supposed to stop, mm. but I applied emotions, mm. and I think maybe that's because of how I was. But raised. let's talk about yeah. the emotions, right? What was happening there? Eish, my brother, uh, I will tell you. Maybe the emotions come from my family businesses, right? Yeah. So when you run a liquor wholesaler, you you have wholesaler, and then you have a retailer on the side where people buy one one. Yeah. So our biggest, biggest, biggest clients or biggest bosses is those ones that buy one one. Because if you look at the markup of one yeah. compared to the markup yes. of a wholesaler, yes. it's, it's different, you know. So I think, you know, every time when you pass there and then you get these guys, you know, those kasi guys of ours, they're like, hey, I'm like, Mahuakwa. and he's like, hey, 50 rent, I'll give this guy 50 rent, and then you just go spend the same 50 rent there. Mm. So I think my love for people started from there. Mm. And when I'm doing supply of food to schools, now I once stayed in Mule, do you remember as a travel, some kid, mm. I know what feeding scheme does to the mm. rural people. Mm. Now I cannot be that guy that disappoints the community. I could not be that guy. Yeah. So if you were to find yourself mm -hmm. in a similar situation again, mm -hmm. what would you do differently? Uh, what I would do differently, I think, I think I just, that process taught me bigger offices. Right? 
I started to knock at certain doors that I never knocked before. Yeah. I can tell you, I would, uh, I'm not scared to go to the CFO direct and say, hey, my man, look, this is the contract, you're not paying me, how do you expect, must I go and tell those schools that you are the problem? Yeah. Because if I do that, there will be strikes. Yeah. Do you want that on your name? No, you don't want that. Yeah. So I think that's what I've learned to say, hold people accountable for what is their responsibility. Yeah. I should not take the fall for other people because I suffered. Yeah. You know, and nobody cared. Yeah. But why am I hearing that you're not going to stop supplying the cake? No, I wouldn't. Like, I, I, <laughs> definitely, let me tell you. That's why I'm saying that I, I would get paid for yeah, it. Yeah. But I would s stop in supplying the kids, my man. Eish. But isn't it difficult, though, to separate the emotion from the business? Uh, I mean, generally speaking. I, 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 I tell know. you, I tell you, I always say to people, people say their greatest investment is money. Mm. I always say my greatest investment is people. Mm. And someone says, why? I'm like, are you aware that a lot of people that have given subcontracts mm. in business are not the people that had money and all this fancy capacity? Mm. No, they were humble people. There were people who said, my brother, I don't know how to do this thing perfectly, but can I go under your wing? Remember, I'm a business mentor. Mm. You know, so I would give this guy a job. I would say, okay, for certification, if you're a plumber, for certification, I have my in-house guy who will come and inspect your work and certification. You will pay the certification, but I'll pay you for labor. But that rate will differ, it will differ as if, I, if I'm giving that guy, obviously, certification plus labor will reduce certification from you, yeah. you see. So that, that's another way of trying to, you know. Emotions, for me, I think emotions will always be there, especially when you build a company with love. Yeah. You know, because it took me from 2011 up until it took me almost six years, five years to open my accounting firm, to register it and get it up and running. So from there, I'm like, I got a lot of lessons. Now it's a side hustle, but I'm like, I worked for this baby, you know, and I will not just change and become a heartless person simply because I got one blunder. Mm. And remember, blunders are part of learning. Mm. If you expect to be in business and not learn, then I, I don't know how other people operate, but I'm like, when I look at myself, I'm like, last year I paid people plus minus 1.5 million worth of salaries. I'm like, this is the same guy that had a blunder of almost a million years ago, yeah. you know. Why not? Sure. Yeah. Mr. Mafepa, thank you so much. I mean, often when we hear people talk about businesses, cutthroat this, ruthless this, and that's how people, rich people make it. But you are saying actually, you can actually do it while being a nice person. <coughs> if I tell you a joke, yeah? uh, somebody asked me to say, so how do you get clients? I said, I, I, do you believe in God? The person said, yeah, I do. I said, so let me tell you about my God. Mm. I don't go look for a client. I get calls, right? I get calls, I get referrals. So the list of clients that I have, I can just uh, even how to be with you today. Mm. You see, mm. it was simply because somebody saw me mm. some good on Twitter mm. where I would just offer services for free yeah. that other people are you know, charging for. Yeah. And somebody just be like, oh, this guy, we can have him on the biggest blunder. Yes. The person does not even know my biggest blunder yes. because I never shared them on Twitter. Yes. You get what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying that I've seen God uh, you know, he operates in his own. We always say, if you want to understand him, read Psalm 23. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yeah, yeah. He will On provide. that very note, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Can we give him a round of applause, guys? <laughs>